The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. There had been a mighty storm at a shipwreck out at sea, and now two men were adrift on the Atlantic in a small open boat. For three days, they had had no food. It seemed the end was near. At last, one of them, trembling and frightened, fell down on his hands and knees, and he began to pray. Oh, God, he said, I've been a wicked, wicked man. I've given myself to unbridled lusts and pleasures. I've broken most of your commandments. I've lived a life of riotousness and sin. But he said, that was all in the past. God, if you will only spare my life now, I promise you, never again will I ever in all of my life, wait a minute, his friend said, not so fast, I think I see a rescue ship. Many a man or woman upon this earth sees the spiritual path or the spiritual way of living only as some sort of awful last-minute desperation resort, the final terrible alternative when everything else has failed. But in truth, it is a mighty joy, declared the master of masters. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I recently read an article about some major businesses which retain a whole staff of corporation lawyers, and one of these attorneys is assigned exclusively to the task of picking out loopholes in legal documents. And yet, there are no escape clauses in God's love for you. God loves you unconditionally. God cares about you with a love which will not let you go. Learn thus to love God in return. For there is joy in this, and God's will for you is good. You will begin to desire to do the will of God when you begin to discover how really good God's will is for you. It is the best thing conceivable for you. God's will is good because God in and of himself is good. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? God has good things for you. Again, Jesus says, There is none good but one that is God. And verse 19 of Psalm 31 begins, Oh, how great is thy goodness. God's will for you is good. Paul wrote, Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. God's will for you is not only good, it is perfect. And God's will encompasses not only you yourself, but all of humankind as well. Oliver Wendell Holmes, who was justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, once wrote, My religion is summed up in the first two words of the Lord's Prayer. End of quote. Now those two words, the first two words of the Lord's Prayer are these. Our Father. Our Father. And in those two brief words, this Jesus of Nazareth told more about God and man and their relationship than all the texts of philosophy and theology have before and since. Because the word Father bespeaks God's love, God's great care, compassion, and concern for his children. The word Our bespeaks God's love for all people, his universality. And since all are children of God, we are loved, we are members in one great worldwide, indeed universal, family of God. A family governed by God's love. God loves you this very moment. If only you could dare to believe that. If only you could experience that for one scintilla of a second and know what that feels like. How invigorating, how rejuvenating, how joyous it is to know in living faith that you are loved by God, that you are, wherever you're listening to this spiritual renaissance broadcast, by satellite around the world in whatever nation, whatever country, whatever your racial background, your ethnic background, whoever you may be, if you can only dare by faith for one moment to believe that you are infinitely loved by the infinite God 
who created this seemingly infinite universe, this vast, vast expanse of solar systems and galaxies and nebula. That God who created all of that loves you where you are, as you are. You may say, I'm imperfect, I'm bad, I've done so many wrong things, I've failed so many times. God wipes that all away with forgiveness, with fatherly, parental, caring, compassionate love for you which meets you right where you are. It's not that you have to achieve some future state of perfection. God loves you where you are and as you are, in your misery perhaps, in your feelings of guilt, in your feelings of failure, and feeling downcast, whatever your circumstance in life, whatever your situation, whether it's going well or whether life seems to you a daily torment. Yet still there is hope. There is the hope of the living love of the living God for you. The God who is your father, who desires to be your friend. That you live in a vital sense of daily companionship with God. And in that there is joy. There is gladness. Because God has a will for you. And God not only has a will, he has a don't. There are things God desires you not to do as well. Yet strangely enough, the more you become truly enthusiastic and excited about doing God's good will, the less and less it enters your mind that there are some other things which you are not doing. Why? Because God's will is so good. It is so real. It is so relevant. It's so immediate and vital. This experience of finding and knowing God and serving God, that it begins to eclipse everything else in your life. And living in love for God and love for others become the great joys of your life. That is the expression of God's will for you. The desire to do good to others, to love God and love humankind, those were Jesus of Nazareth's two great commandments. And then stopping doing the bad things becomes all the simpler because you're drawn to something so good. I remember one time as a young boy, it was on a Saturday morning as I recall, a friend of mine and I, became irritated with each other. And as young boys will, out in the backyard of my home, we were beginning to have a scuffle, a little fight. And suddenly my dad, who I am certain had been watching all of this through the window, stepped out onto the back porch and said, come on, boys, let's go shoot some basketball. Now, he didn't respond with anger toward us. He simply had the wisdom to call us to something better. We immediately forgot about the fight. We went and played basketball. So it is, in a way, with the will of God. You don't care so much about leaving an evil when you're going towards some great good, some greater good, something that's more exciting, something that's more fulfilling, something which is even more fun. Because there is joy. There is real happiness, the only real happiness there is to be had in human life, which is living spiritually by true values, truth, and beauty, and goodness, living in love for God and love for others. Misery is hatred and cruelty and unkindness and vengeance and revenge. That's a miserable way to live. The really happy, really joyous way to live is in love. In love and forgiveness, in peace, in love for God and love for others. And knowing God, not just believing in God intellectually, but having the first-hand faith-born experience of living as the son or the daughter of God, God created you to be. Some people will argue that belief in God is flatly contradicted by the findings and perspectives of modern science. Yet listen to what just a few modern scientists have written about the subject. Dr. George K. Schweitzer, Ph.D., professor of nuclear chemistry at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, has written, Scientific advance in the past century has been phenomenal. Man has harnessed the atom, tamed the electron, conquered diseases, shrunk time, shriveled distance, investigated things from the tiny neutrino to the gigantic galaxy and provided his fellow human beings with a multitudes of gadgetry to make life comfortable. But there is one thing that man has been unable to control, writes Dr. Schweitzer, and that is 
himself. In spite of all our progress, he writes, in knowledge and technology, men are still disconcerted, morally unstable, beset with difficulties, and unable to secure a lasting peace. Man has changed his world in a remarkable way, but has not been able to alter himself. Since this problem is basically a spiritual one, the sole way that humankind can be changed is by God. Only in this miraculous transformation rests hope for the atom-odd radioactivity ruffled world of our day and its inhabitants, wrote Dr. Schweitzer. That is the hope of the world. That is the hope of your life. The finding and knowing of a God who can transform you from the inside out. Dr. Walter R. Hearn, Ph.D., professor of chemistry at Iowa State College, has written, Often I am absorbed in a kind of philosophic quest, trying to fit all that I have experienced personally into one coherent picture of God's universe, actually worshiping, listen to this, the Creator, by trying to think His very thoughts after him. What a description of the scientific research process. Thinking God's thoughts after him. Simply discovering the majesty and the reality of what God has done in this universe. God has revealed himself to man, writes Dr. Robert B. Fisher, professor of chemistry at Indiana University. God has revealed himself to man through that which he has created. Whether we observe and study this creation through the eyes of an astronomer, the geologist, the botanist, the chemist, the businessman, or the boy or girl, we are observing and studying the handiwork of God, whether we realize it or not, writes Dr. Fisher. You yourself are the handiwork of God. God has given you soul, personality, mind, the ability to choose God or forsake God. And the greatest decision of all is to give your life to the living God who gave you your life originally, regardless of how many chronological years you are old, how long you've been living on this earth. God has been there with you, has cared about you, has known of you, for God knows all things. This is the doctrine of omniscience. God knows everything, and God loves you with a love which sustains and empowers and invigorates and enables you to live as you were born and created to live in love for God and love for others in a joy unspeakable because God cares for you. You may say, what has God ever done for me? I look back over my life, what has God done for me? You might as well ask what your mother has ever done for you? How often when you were young did your mother look in on you as you slept and you never knew about it? How often did she help you with your studies or fix you a lunch for you to take to school or patch your jeans or darn your socks or clean up your room or buy you a book or help you or hope for you or pray for you and you never gave it a second thought? That is how God loves you. The God who created this vast interstellar universe, God loves you. Whether you've ever stopped to think about it or not, whether you've reflected on the fact or meditated on it or not ever in your life, that is how God has loved you all this time. All this time. God has thus loved you. And the most natural response conceivable is simply to love this good and loving God in return. God loves you. Claim that in living faith this moment as you listen to this spiritual renaissance broadcast and all things, all things will become new for you. For free literature on the spiritual life, material which I have written on these very topics, if you feel that divine discontent, that inward spiritual restlessness, yearning for a finding and knowing of God, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written some free literature on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the spiritual truth which rings down through the corridors of human history that this entire world was intended and created to live as one family of love, the family of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. And you are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this living God in this great 
far-flung universal family of God. If you're intrigued by this truth, if that rings some sort of celestial bell inside your soul when I speak it into this radio microphone, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.